Hey there guys, Alexander here from Programmer Network. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, in today's video, I'd like to talk about my VS Code setup. It's one of the uh, very commonly asked questions in my evening stream, in a Programmer Network stream. And I finally kind of decided to record, start recording those videos of common questions that I get in the stream because I keep spending a lot of time every, nearly every few streams answering the same questions. Hey Alex, which uh, VS Code extensions are you using? Why is your sidebar, you know, to the right, not to the left? Which font are you using? Oh, how did you do that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna record this hopefully very short video just talking about the extensions and my workflow and stuff and then Maybe it can help you to improve some of the stuff that you're doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think uh, one thing that's worth mentioning is that in this video, I'm gonna also talk about a bit about uh, GitHub Copilot and OpenAI or ChatGPT, because I, I think that fundamentally, if you're not using those tools, you are losing out a lot on productivity. You're kind of endangering yourself to fall behind some other people who are using it because those tools really and truly give you a massive advantage over people who are either out of their values or, or being basement dwellers uh, as we are, just the refusing to kind of use those tools, right? So we're going to talk about a few few different things today and what I think that is uh, some, somewhat uh, uh, um, a productive workflow in VS Code. So I'm going to press a button here in my stream deck and we're going to switch to the uh, VS Code, uh, the project is relatively empty. I just created this directory so we can speak about VS Code and extensions and workflow. So first thing that you may notice on my screen is that uh, my sidebar is on the right and not on the left. Uh, there are two reasons, there are two philosophies of mine about it. Number one, I like my coding area here to be clean and not get distracted by files and extensions and stuff because typically if you're using any any IDE or text editor properly, you're using shortcuts. So if you want to open a file, you press command or control P and then open a specific file, et cetera, et cetera. So ho I hope truly that you're not looking for files by clicking, by opening this and then going through a bunch of different folders and files. So that's number one. The second reason is, is very apparent. So if we go here to appearance and then move it, move this thing to the left, you can see that every time you actually open this with command B or control B, you can see that your code is jumping as well. So this is a very annoying thing for me because I don't think that code should be doing this and I don't think that this thing should be affecting how the things work. So when I'm streaming in the evening, it would be really annoying also for my viewers to keep looking at this, right? It's almost like your eyes are bleeding. So those are the two fundamental reasons why I think things should be on the right. Uh, many of the viewers of mine is like, oh, I can't even imagine putting it to the right. I had it on the left for, for years, for decades. But I'm genuinely telling you, try to do this because it will be better, I promise. Try to force yourself to do this for a couple of days and you'll see that you will not go back to this thing being in the left, right? Another, another thing that I'm doing, and this is... <laughs> This is very, uh, this is very subjective, very personal. I actually always use uh, the default VS Code theme. Right now, I'm using this experimental one coming uh, in the in the, one of the recent versions of VS Code. This is obviously very subjective, and you will use whatever you like. I think that this theme and Dark Plus are two probably um, most accurate themes for your eyes and also if you're streaming, if you're sharing your screen with others, the contrast of colors seem to be really awesome and then, you know, I've experimented with this in my stream, I tried switching between multiple different themes, but every single time I would go back to this, my viewers would say, hey, yeah, actually that that's very easy to look at. So as you can see there, I don't have nothing fancy here. I basically, when it comes to the uh, icons, right, I'm using VS Code icons, so also nothing fancy there. And I genuinely feel that those defaults are simply the most amazing defaults of any text editor I've tried in my life. And I tried, you know, professionally programming 15 years, past 15 years, I've tried nearly all of them. And this is just amazing. All right. So that's just my philosophy about how the stuff looks like. I don't generally use the terminal in VS Code much. I have my... Um, I have my terminal that I spawn with the shortcuts like this, so I don't really care about this. The main reason why I don't use integrated terminal is because I always have to switch back to the VS Code context to have the terminal opened, and I don't really find that useful at all. So essentially, uh, I keep my terminal disconnected from, um, from my VS Code is because I think that those two things should not be correlated that much, right? In simple words, 
your terminal isn't always something that specifically relates to the context of your editor. You might be spawning a bunch of different windows here, et cetera, et cetera, and you probably don't want to have it in VS Code. I can't guarantee for the performance of this, but I would assume that the terminal in your VS Code, considering VS Code is written in JavaScript, is probably not as fast as, let's say, some other, uh, some other uh, terminals. If you're wondering, like, what am I using here uh, in my terminal, there's a repository that I'm going to include directly to my GitHub, and it shows you how to, to configure this terminal yourself. Uh, but in simple words, it, it is a Windows terminal. And then inside of there, I'm, I have a ZSH and Tmax and some of the other libraries. Uh, a lot of people have asked about it because they liked it. So therefore, that's why, that's why I'm sharing this information with you. Okay. So if we go now into the actually extensions and stuff, let's, uh, let's open this to do's here. Sorry, let's open the notes. And uh, notes is basically one of the extensions that I want to talk about. Therefore, I explicitly wrote some notes in it so you can kind of see it being used live. So notes basically is a very simple extension in which you can basically save markdown files. They can be various types of notes. You can see I have some notes, random notes, and I've created this thing specifically for this video. So I've created this markdown file with some of the extensions that I want to go through with you guys. Of course, I could have also uh, written the, give me one second, that wasn't uh, intentional. I could have also written the, the readme, obviously, in, um, in, the, in the, like, I don't know, readme MD in the part of the project, but I didn't want to do that because I want to uh, just show you uh, this pretty much how it is when it's live, right? So if we go back to this, you can see I have a few extensions here that I want to talk about, one font, and then I'm going to show you live some, how some of those things work. So first extension and probably the most useful extension to me ever in VS Code is uh, called PostgreSQL. Uh, this extension essentially, if we go to if we go to extensions uh, here, is a database connector. So it's the best database connector that I've seen to date when it comes to uh, when it comes to data like uh, database extensions and stuff. So if I actually go here and say edit connection, you can see that this data this thing has uh, almost all of the most commonly used databases out there. So I'm using it in my stream every evening for Programmer Network to connect to Redis and Postgres. And it's truly, truly awesome. So this is called, I'm going to include all of those links, so don't worry too much. But if you're not using this extension seriously, it's going to change your life in the context of not needing to necessarily open PG admin, dbeaver, and stuff like that. Because the whole point of this video is to kind of um, uh, show you how, how to kind of stay in the same context and not leave the editor too much. So, so the point of those extensions is like, how can I integrate with my IDE or text editor in this case, in a way so I minimize uh, the amount of uh, context switching as much as I can, right? So this is a super, super good thing. I can actually show you here. In, in, in the, so this is my, for example, development, uh, development thing. And let me actually drag it here because I can see that my camera is there. So you can see here we have, you can view all the tables uh, you can get all the records of the tables. You can write the queries, right? So here we can say select, you know, I don't know, let's say slug from article, right? And we can only get that. You can update things live. You can update the records. You can just go here and update it, right? You can do all sorts of things, right? It's truly, truly, truly super useful thing. It's very lightweight. It feels very naturally integrated in the context of VS Code. And I would highly, highly advise you to do this. There's views and there's functions and some other things here that I'm not going to necessarily talk about because this is not a tutorial on this. But you can see here, for example, this is one of the queries from Programmer Network uh, for fetching the feed. And as you can see here, I've been playing inside of here to, to write that query to optimize it before I actually integrate it in my code. But it's a super nice thing that you have a database interface or an extension that you can interface directly with your da database through, through VS Code. Respectfully, you can do the same with Redis. As you can see, I have a Redis connector here. It, uh, I, I can show you some Redis records here as well. I can do pretty much the same things. I can add some key value pairs to Redis. It's not as extensive as the Postgres one, but still you don't need like an extra, if you are not doing anything super complex, if you just need to view, you know, your Redis cache, you know, how it, are things properly cached, you know, when you do some operation, this is all also super cool. So when it comes to databases, honestly, I think those two, uh, or this one extension that covers both this NoSQL and stuff, are super, super cool. Again, I'm going to share those links, so don't stress too much about them, but this is called 
PostgreSQL or Postgres, uh, that's the name of the client. Another very cool extension that I often use at work and generally, no matter what I'm doing, is called uh, To Do Plus. And this To Do Plus extension, if I zoom here, here a bit, you can press Control and Enter, and you can create, let's say, some, you know, some tasks. And then you can create, you know, some more subtasks. And then essentially you can, uh, you can um, say, okay, this is critical and it's going to highlight it. This is low. You know, this is uh, some other task. This is high, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it's super simple. Nothing really more than this. Uh, the way that I often use this is I'm going to go to, you know, GitHub projects, linear, you know, uh, whatever Trello or, you know, um, any of the Kanban boards, you know, Clash and whatever. Jira, you know, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to set some of the tasks for myself just so I don't switch the context. And then when I'm done with them, I'm going to go to one of those boards again, move them here, et cetera, et cetera. So this is super cool if you're building a, like um, a side project, if you are doing some sort of a um, contribution to some other library and you want to just put some notes down, this is a really good place and you can also organize them. Also, of course, when you finish a task, you can, uh, you can just, uh, you can just mark it as done basically. So what was the, what was the, uh, oops, not what I actually wanted, but you can also, uh, you can also mark, mark them as done. Like, like, uh, let me actually see how was it. So for some reason, I think I, have, I might, might have messed something up. It's not really doing it now, but generally when you press, uh, uh, you know, when you press uh, command and enter, it generally just sets it uh, to done. So this is a super tiny one. Give it a shot. Again, link is going to be included. I would highly advise this one as well. All right. So if we proceed more, let's go to our, uh, let's, let's go to our notes and go here. We have Thunder Client, and this is uh, probably one of the things that you must have if you're interfacing a lot with, with your databases and stuff, sorry, with your APIs. So let's actually give, uh, let's, let's try this one. So what I generally do, what I also have in Programmer Network, and this plays really nice alongside with Swagger, is you can say here, okay, I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna create a new, new, new request, let's call it, and I've actually uh, stored one of the URLs that we're gonna use here. So we're gonna use this fake JSON pla placeholder API. So I'm gonna do that here, I'm gonna say send, and as you can see, we've gotten the request over here. Now, the good thing about this extension, right, is that you can create collections, which means that uh, you can save all of those requests as part of some collection. So let's imagine that you, you wanted to save all of your API requests in this project easily possible. You can say save the collection. Let's, call, let's say that this collection, we create a new one and call it, you know, API v.1. Let's imagine programmer, programmer, network, API, we point, well, let's imagine we create this collection, we do this. Now, if we go to the collection, right, we have this thing here. Now you can narrow this down further, right? So you can create a new folder here and you create a resource called, let's say, to-dos, right? So you can say to-dos and then you can move this thing here. So you can kind of structure your uh, requests a bit. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes you know, you, want, you will want to do, try out this request, that request, et cetera, et cetera, right? So essentially, you know, I can now never always come back here and I can do the same, same request. Of course, just like with Postman and Curl and, uh, you know, a um, uh, bunch of those other Insomnia and a bunch of those other editors, you have the authorization, uh, uh, you know, headers here. So you can do the bare token. You can paste it here from your browser, for instance. You have odds too. You have various different types of authorization strategies. So you can also do that. You can write the tests. Again, this we cannot go in, inside of the, in, in this video into every single detail of those things, but this is basically how it works. A really, really good, good extension, and it can really save you a lot of time. Oh, like what was the, uh, how do I, what do I call to get this and that? The, uh, another good thing about this is that when you do this, it's gonna create this standard test directory. So you can essentially commit this directory and keep it kind of, um, uh, keep it uh, in your team so you can you can actually truly commit this and keep it maintained so your colleagues would also if they're using VS code they could pull this and they would have the same collection the same request that they could then in, uh, interface with your API right so really 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 good one uh, okay let's let's uh, let's move further so if we go back here I didn't want to really talk much about um, 
you know, uh, technology specific subjects, in this case, front end or back end, I want it to be, be to this to be general. But for example, if you're a front end developer by any means, uh, and you're using Tailwind, right, you can use this hack the Tailwind extension, and you can give it some some color like this, right. And then basically what it does, so you give it some arbitrary color, and then it tries to decipher uh, what is the closest uh, color from the Tailwind color palette to that thing. So for example, I just had one color in mind, which is 175CA1, which is a kind of hard blue color. If I hit this enter, you can see it says, hey, closest to that is light blue 700. So I just wanted to throw this one inside because yeah, um, I, I just felt it's, it's, it's something worth mentioning. All right. So if we get back to the code here, you can see that we have the, this, this, this yellow line right over here that comes from this extension called guides, right? So essentially it gives you, it gives you a bit of, uh, um, you know, it gives you a bit of, uh, you know, lines to, to, to see where your blocks are opened and closed and stuff like that. So you can see now here, if I have, uh, if I write this, uh, you know, statement here, you can see that there's another guide right here where my cursor is. So that is also pretty, pretty useful. Actually, I don't know if you can see my cursor, I guess you can. And again, this one is also gonna be included like all of the rest of them. So it's called guides. Now we're gonna get into two AI type of things and I am pretty sure you know about them. One is called code GPT. Another one is called Git Copilot. I'm pretty sure that you know about the Copilot. Uh, so let's uh, let's kind of see here a bit. So for example, what I can do with code uh, or chat GPT or code GPT extension, I can highlight, for example, this code and I can say, hey, you know, um, explain this function to me, right? So I right click it, I do it. We basically, it what the, what the extension itself does, it takes your selections and input, gives it to the AI, and then it says, hey, this code defines a function called double in. This is incredibly powerful. So you should, if you're not using this, you are really setting yourself up for failure almost because this is almost cheating, right? I have set up this super basic example here so we don't go into complex code, but what this thing can help you with, it can truly, truly make you a super, super great developer. So especially if you're a junior developer, you sometimes don't know what something is, having this, this extension contextualized in here so you don't have to leave your editor is truly, truly amazing. And of course, if you're like a super, super junior developer, you can come here and say, hey, what is the diff, what is the difference between, and let me just uh, drag this here, between const and lat in JavaScript, right? So, so this is truly, truly, truly useful. Of, of course, this is equally or even more useful to seniors, but if you're a junior and you're trying to learn you must, you must have this, you must have this. Respectfully as well, uh, there's a, a, a GitHub has released, as many of you maybe already know, uh, something called GitHub Copilot, which is auto kind of completion AI as well. So if I say here, uh, write, uh, write a function that takes in the number and turns, yeah. And then I come here and say function double, right? You can kind of see that I get this, I get basically help from Copilot, right? I can, you can see here, I can press tab to accept or I can press control and right arrow to, to accept specific uh, tokens or words so I can accept them one by one. But generally, you know, you see what, what, it, what it generated and then you press a tab. So those two things in combination is something that's completely revolutionary in the software engineering. Again, I've been software engineer professionally for 15 years and I've wrote my first code 20 and something years ago. And this is tru truly, truly insane. So if you're not using those tools, you have to use them. Like if you don't, you are setting yourself up just for failure. So please keep that in mind. So that's, I think there's no more need to go into this. I'm just gonna say, if you also right click here, you can do a few more things. You can say, hey, document this code. So if I say document, you can see here in the right is gonna document my function, right? So I could literally just copy paste this and you know paste it here, it wrote documentation for me. I can also right click it and say, hey, write unit tests for me, how insane that is. Just think about it. So I can say, hey, unit test this double function as you can see here, it's writing this for me. Absolutely incredible. This is absolutely incredible. The amount of time you save 
by writing this gibberish manually is absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely incredible. Okay. I, I think I was, uh, I was explicit enough with my emotion as well so you can understand how important having this is. All right, the next thing is a, a, one of the extensions that I've been probably using the longest. It's called Git Project Manager. I've been using this extension for literally a decade. And what it basically does when you, when you press Command-Shift-P or Command-Shift-P and type GPM, uh, essentially you give it, a, as you can see here, I, I didn't set it up in this case, but if I go to user settings, because this is a isolated project completely and I type GPM and uh, here you would set up the, the, you would basically set up the directory in which all of your uh, GitHub repositories are. So you can see base project folders. So if I go here, you would say, hey, where, where is your code? As you can see here, in my case, it's here. So when I press command, shift and P and then search for GPM, it's gonna list all of my Git projects. So I can switch very easily. Right now I'm, I'm in a bit different context, which doesn't work because I'm using a mixture of uh, uh, Windows system on my Windows machine and Windows, so that's that's maybe why we're actually not seeing anything. But generally, I actually think we will see it now in a second because I think now it's just indexing stuff. But generally, if you're working on multiple projects, you know, you have some private projects, you have your work projects, you're working on a uh, you're working on a machine that that maybe is your uh, you know your computer is your company computer that's the only one you have this is very handy if you're switching a lot be be between the projects let's actually see if, if if it doesn't show the list then we're just going to move on but that's that's how it works and i'm going to actually i'm going to share this thing as well um okay so let's uh, let's move on i think we're almost done we have gitlens gitlens basically is an extension uh, where you can see the blames and stuff so let's actually maybe let me just uh, let me just push this to GitHub quickly, and then we can I can show you. I'm just gonna on my off screen. I'm just gonna just gonna create a new repository, and I'm gonna call it uh, Programmer Network VS Code. So I'm gonna say Programmer Network VS Code Setup. This is Alex's default. Uh, this is Alex's list of VS Code extensions and workflow. So yeah, so I'm gonna just create this repository and then we're gonna kinda add it here. So I'm gonna say this. So let's actually open the terminal here just for this context. We're gonna add this remote, right? Uh, and then uh, we're gonna go here and add all, all of the stuff that we just did. Let's actually also add those, let's create a readme file as well in the file, se file selector. So let's say uh, touch readme.md. And then let's open it up and then let's go to our extension. I'm literally just gonna move all the my private nodes to that readme quickly, right? There we go. Let's maybe remove this so you can actually you guys have all of the all of the you know all of the stuff, all of the notes that I have. And uh, yeah, so let's push uh, let's push those two files. Let's say initial commit for YouTube video. So we commit this and we publish the branch, right? We're gonna create a pull request. We're gonna do this. And then uh, in a second over here, I'm gonna let me see. Maybe did I did I not commit it? I did actually commit it all good. So now why why am I actually doing this? Well now if we go ahead, right, and, and we make some changes, so we add a comment here. Right? I can now click on this button here, right? Well, actually, no. I can click on this button, and we can see we can see the difference between what's in actual production or or whatever uh, whatever whatever branch we are on and the changes we're pushing. So this is one of the things that uh, Git um, what is it called uh, Git uh, Git Lens gives you, amongst many other things. So anyway, just install Git Lens. In simple words, uh, it's gonna just improve your Git, Git experience in your VS Code. It does a lot more things. Again, that's not what this video is about. I'm sure you can find millions of videos that do that, but install that. And then I think lastly now, uh, we're gonna talk about Fire Code, uh, Fira Code, whatever you pronounce it, font. As you can see, many people ask me, hey, Alex, you know, how do you get this triple equal to be, to look like this and double equal like this and this? And that is in simple words, just the font. It is called Fire Code, and as you can see, as, as I type, we get those annotations and stuff, right? This is a fat arrow function, right? You know, 
is a strict equality operator, right? And this is all, by the way, um, uh, GitHub Copilot doing. So you can see in many other, many other things here, it, it comes with many other uh, different kind of lingatures, I think, as, as they call and stuff. And I'm also going to include that in here. So I think, uh, I, think that's pretty much, uh, I think that's pretty much it for this video. I think to summarize, there's few extensions out there. The most critical one that you use is the AI ones because they're going to give you a huge advantage over other people unless they're using it as well. Keep your code, uh, keep, your, keep your environment clean. Make sure that your eyes are not bleeding when you're looking at your team. I, I've seen a lot of people using those purple themes, green themes. Truly make, ask yourself, is this healthy for your eyes? Is it putting too much pressure on them? Um, remove the extensions that you don't need. Install the ones that I told you, they're gonna help you a lot. And um, I think that's it. As you can see, you don't really need too many extensions to be productive. I think you just need the right ones. If you have liked this video, please subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna be trying to do a lot of content. Please, even more importantly, sign up on www.programmer.network. Help us test it. And don't forget to join my evening streams uh, on twitch.com slash programmer underscore network. I hope you enjoy this video. I'm gonna, I hope that you're gonna find it useful. And um, I hope to, to see you guys in, a, in, in another one. Have a great one. Peace out. Cheers.